I've always been a bookworm. As a kid, I got my allowance in the form of books because that's what I spent all my money on anyway. I got three books a week and even that wasn't enough. Fast forward several decades later and the amount of disposable time that I have has waned, but my interest in reading has not. In 2020, I read 54 books, last year that was 20, and this year I'm up to 31 so far. All of that is on the Kindle. Now I do read some other books on my Kobo e-reader and some hardcover books, but that isn't included in the tally. I got my first Kindle in 2010 and I've never been without one since. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the tips that I've learned for reading and taking notes on Kindles in particular. Tip number one is to narrow the top of the funnel of the books that you want to read. I use a service called Shortform to help me screen books in advance so I know whether or not I want to continue to read them. This is a book called Ultra Learning, for example, and I can already go and highlight these, but also I can take a look at the full book guide and it's a chapter by chapter breakdown of what the book is. I don't use this as a replacement for reading. It's more like trying to figure out whether this book is worth really reading. I place a high value on my time, so services like this are really essential to my reading habit. If you don't use short form, then you can also just read or listen to reviews of books that you might be interested in. Tip number two won't come as a surprise to most of you. It is to use the Kindle with Readwise and with Obsidian. I've gone into the details of how to set up this integration, but in a nutshell, you use the Readwise official Obsidian plugin so that you can highlight something on the Kindle, have those highlights sent to Readwise, and then from Readwise to Obsidian. This has really changed the way that I read and take notes because there's a direct link. I know that everything that I do on the Kindle is going to show up in my Obsidian Vault. Tip number three is related to that and it's to change the Readwise settings so that the books that are imported into Obsidian are tagged correctly. From your Readwise account, you can go to readwise.io slash export, look for Obsidian and click configure. From here, you can decide how things are going to be imported into Obsidian or exported from Readwise. So for example, how do you want a book to appear? Maybe if you have a different name for the folder that you want the books to go in, you could put them in here, or you could put everything into a single folder. So books, articles, and tweets, and podcasts all go into one. Really depends on how you set up things in Obsidian. And then you can also change the file name that Readwise uses, as well as the format for the contents of that file. I don't really see a need for changing the file name, but I do like to have my own custom formatting. For example, here I've got the markdown first heading so that the title of the book is always going to be shown as a heading. And as you go through here, you'll see the preview on the right side of how things are going to look. As I'm going through this now, I realize that I could actually put a double colon here so that this URL field will be recognized as a data view parameter in case I want to query it later. And I'm going to do the same thing for author, actually. Then you can also decide how you want Readwise to handle it when you have new highlights that you add to a book that you already have highlights for, and you can change whether that's a new heading or not. Here I've made it so that the highlights are always going to come in quote format so that I know when something is mine, that I something that I wrote, or if it's something that the author wrote. And then here's the line that you'd need to change if you want to change how your personal Kindle notes are displayed. There's also YAML front matter here. So this is going to come up in the top of the note right here. In my case, I have a few tags that are already set up, namely TVZ, which is like my inbox tag readwise, and then whether it's a book, podcast, tweet, or what have you, and the date as well. You don't really have to save anything else. These will take into effect on the next time that Obsidian runs your readwise sync. Tip number four is to use multiple Kindles. Now this could mean actual physical devices. So this is my Kindle Oasis and this one is my basic Kindle 2022. And I've got a signature paper white here somewhere, but it could also mean using the devices that you already have. You can use Kindle to read on your browser. You can also use the Kindle app on pretty much any mobile operating system and you can use it on your tablet as well. Closely related to having multiple devices is always having at least one with you. That way you're encouraged to reach for a book instead of mindlessly scrolling through, I don't know, Twitter. 
If you go to read.amazon.com, you can read Kindle books on the web and you can do highlights and notes as well. For example, I'm going to highlight this with yellow and then I can also write a note. Tip number five is to read multiple books at the same time with no guilt. I don't know why we're taught that you have to read one book and finish it before you move on, because the reality is that, you know, you're not always going to feel like reading some dense nonfiction book. Sometimes you just want a lighthearted fantasy fiction read, and that's totally okay. Having multiple books going means that you can switch to the one that you're interested in at the time, and it's going to keep you on that reading train a lot longer. Tip number six is to make notes while you're reading and think about Obsidian notes that you might want to link it to. For example, in this note here, I could type out principle of atomicity because I already know that I have an Obsidian note for that. Now go ahead and save that. That way, when that highlight is synced to Obsidian, the note will be synced as well and it'll be a clickable Obsidian note. Tip number seven is to delineate chapters in the book as headings in the Obsidian file. You can actually do this by highlighting and creating a note. While you're reading the Kindle book, you'll see that there is an outline for the book, but these headings aren't recognized by default. What you have to do is when you go into one of these sections and you can highlight it and then also add a note. In this note, just type H. Too. The way that you can think about it is that the title of the book, if you've set up the read wise settings like I did, is going to be H1, the highest heading. So the next lower title is going to be H2, the second heading. This is equivalent in Obsidian to typing the two hashtags before the title. So I'm going to hit save, exit. So now let's look at the same thing in Obsidian. If we open up the book thinking in systems, it has already been synchronized by Readwise. And if we scroll down here, you'll see this is the note where I typed out principle of atomicity. And now that it's in my Obsidian Vault, I can actually open it up. And now just by hovering over it, I can see the contents of the note. I can also open it up in another tab and see the note there. So once it's in Obsidian, this link that I wrote in the note within the Kindle app now works. So if I open up this outline of this note, you'll see that this now appears as a heading. This is a good way to be able to set headings and also set links to other Obsidian notes without even going into Obsidian. This was just something that I did within the Kindle app itself. And then when that note gets to Obsidian, it'll automatically have that heading. This way you can preserve the structure of the book that you're reading and have it in Obsidian to give you a bit more of a context around what you highlighted and why. Tip number eight is to either get a cover for your Kindle or a pop socket. This is my Kindle Oasis, which is already easier to grip than normal, but it is still nice to have this cover. It's like one of those origami ones where I can just have it be a stand or I can use it to just be able to grip the book a little bit more. It just makes it more like a book that has a cover. And it's also cool that it's like an auto wake situation so that it automatically is ready for you to read when you open the cover. On my smaller Kindle, I thought it was a bit overkill to still have a cover for it. And it also adds a little bit more bulk. And this is the one that I bring with me on a daily basis. So instead I added a pop socket. I'm a huge fan of pop sockets in general. I also have it on every phone that I've got. It's basically this little sticky thing that you put on the back of your device and it just helps you like grip it more. And it also goes down to almost nothing. So it doesn't take up much space until you pop it back up. And now you can just read with one hand, whereas otherwise you'd need like one hand to hold it and then another hand to like turn the pages. On Amazon, you can go to devices, select the device that you've got, and you'll be able to copy this email address or change it if you'd like. Then you can send emails to this address with like a PDF or a different format of ebook attached to it. That way you can still send things to your Kindle, even if it's not from Amazon. And tip number 10 is to connect your Kindles to your Goodreads account. 
That way, when you finish a book on Kindle, then it'll also be marked as completed on Goodreads. Goodreads is a platform for kind of social reading. It is a way to talk about books, find new books, and share the books that you've read and even the highlights that you've made in them. You can follow people. So if you know people that have the same sort of taste in books as you, then you can see what they're reading. And you can also set reading challenges. So I wanted to read at least 12 books a year, but I am ahead of schedule. And you can also see where other people are at with their own reading challenges. You can also see what they've already read. And over here, you can see the Kindle notes and highlights that you've made. All this is synced automatically. So it already picked up that highlight that I did from the web. And I can also see that note that I created. You can also opt to make those notes visible but I rarely do that. I've tried many generations of Kindles and I've also tried other e-readers. I have several generations of the Kobo and I've gone through phases where I read only on my mobile or only on my tablet. For some reason though, I always come back to the Kindle. It is just nothing like it in terms of convenience and price and just ease of use. If you'd like to see how I process notes in Obsidian after I've gotten them from the Kindle, then check out this video. Thank you for watching. Disfruta tu libro.